So we'll get right into it. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about virtual drop-ins. And uh, just to kind of start off, uh, you know, we have an example here of uh, a normal, you know, physical kiosk that, you know, students are going to see, uh, approach, type in their ID and, and, you know, see a tutor, maybe an advisor, <clears throat> you know, whatever staff you might have on uh, there and basically p pick all the options that they wouldn't normally. So whether that's the services that you have them select from, maybe you have them pick a course or instructor um, and, you know, obviously tutor or whatever and, and get in with them. So, you know, what basically what we're going to kind of be discussing is a way to kind of get in, but not tr the traditional way. So we basically have a virtual kiosk or a virtual link, some people will call it. Um, and, and and that's the idea is basically we're going to provide a, a link to the student so that they can get in the center, meet with someone, whether it be uh, virtually or even in the center. Um, I've had where, you know, people uh, using this could actually um, be physically in the center, but maybe they wanted to, uh, you know, meet remotely with the students that are in their office and, and and they're just meeting as the students come in. Maybe they have computers, maybe there's some other tasks that they're supposed to be doing on the computer, so it's more convenient that way. Um, so it can actually be used for both physical or uh, in there. And in fact, if you have a waiting line queue, you'll see those people waiting uh, in that same queue. So this is actually using a lot of the settings, um, or actually all the settings that uh, you choose like when um, you're setting up your walk-in settings in the control panel. Um, so those are basically all the kind of settings like, you know, do they pick a service? Do they pick a course? Do they pick an instructor? Um, how do the tutors show up if, if you have tutors? Um, so all those kind of options that they're picking in your center at the physical kiosk are now going to be presented to them when they click on this link. And there is one kind of difference is uh, when they walk up to the physical kiosk, they're really just typing in their ID. With this one, they're going to have to log in to the back end of the website to make sure that it is that student uh, that you're uh, uh, visiting with. So, so this is kind of breaking down, and I, I mentioned a few of these uh, similarities and difference. So, um, you know, one thing that's similar is is basically the process for which they're walking in. So. It uses the same settings that are in your control panel walk-ins. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, so it's the same flow, uh, just as if they were in the center. Um, you can um, customize the link or kiosk, if you will, uh, to be designed for specific purposes. This is true not only with a uh, virtual link, but um, the uh, sign-in stations or sign-in kiosks that you set up in your center. So if you had like an isolated area where maybe you needed, you know, uh, one computer uh, set up to sign in students for a specific service or um, course that you're offering, you could actually go ahead and lock it down to one of those services, one of those courses. Um, and technically you could pick, pick everything that they would normally pick uh, so they don't have to choose anything and they just get signed in. Um, a lot of cases where you're doing like supplemental instruction, things like that, uh, folks might use that fixed uh, kiosk or fixed link. Mm. Um, another option here is, uh, or similarity, I'm sorry, uh, is that um, both options generate a, a session log, which this is what we come to expect with uh, Academia is that it'll create a log for you. Um, but that means that you can do all the things that you can normally traditionally do with uh, a log. So you can add comments on a log. You can complete an assessment on the log. Um, you know, if there's surveys, surveys would be presented to the student as well. Um, so all those types of things, those are pretty much the same. Um, now, the differences that we have is, I talked about this a little bit, is they would have to actually um, log in uh, versus uh, just using their ID. You know, that was one difference. The other thing is, um, that they can use these links from anywhere. So that's why I was saying they could use it inside the center, outside the center. Um, but as long as it has internet access uh, and can reach out to our server, then it, they can access these uh, virtual drop-in links. Now, um, 
we'll see this later on, but uh, you can actually establish uh, like time limits as well. So it's not just like I can click on this whenever uh, and, and you know, the student could try to connect at 2 a.m. when you don't have anybody, that kind of thing. So we'll see that in here. Um, and also the, um, you know, physical kiosks are usually only for, uh, you know, face to face because there's not really a way for them to click a link to join uh, a virtual session. Whereas, like I said, I've seen it used, uh, the links actually used both ways, like in the center sometimes and um, outside of it. So. All right, so these are the steps uh, that you're going to do um, to uh, basically create a virtual link. And um, the first one is kind of outside of uh, the scope of it, but if you don't have this enabled, um, then basically you'll never never be able to set up these virtual links. So um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. that but basically we're going to go in the control panel, virtual sessions, both at the college and the center level, and we're going to enable some virtual options. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here I've got my, uh, I'm actually for my kiosk here, so I'm going to log in as an admin. And uh, we're going to go ahead and go to administration, control panel, and visit the uh, virtual session section. And we're going to pick, uh, well, I'm going to go to the college first, uh, just the top level. And uh, the reason why um, I wanted to visit both sections is um, this is dealing with virtual appointments. So just keep in mind um, this first section is all appointments, so it's not drop ins. But um, one thing that you do want to see is that you have um, this will usually by default. I've changed the terminology here, but it normally will just say connect link. So it'll say enable connect link for users. So you'll want to definitely do that so that the um, tutors will be able to provide a link so that the students can get connected with them. And also the second checkbox is helpful um, just to allow users to update their own uh, link so the tutors themselves can actually throw in their own link. And if it changes or anything like that, they'll be able to update it. Um, <clears throat> now this next section, we're actually going to go look at the center level because this can actually be set uh, at the center level, but we're going to be looking at um, where it says remote sign in links. Uh, this is the same thing as the drop in kiosk or drop in links. Uh, it's been worded differently, so just, you know, kind of have to look out and know that that's what that's talking about. Um, <clears throat> but that's that's basically the walk ins and you want to definitely enable uh, this for administrators. There's also other options like allowing tutors to be able to create these links uh, themselves and um, whether or not you want to allow putting back in line. Uh, it's a little tricky, um, so I don't recommend that. So there's a warning down here as well, <clears throat> because normally when um, a student connects with these connect links, if they're in a waiting line kind of setup and you've already um, signed them in, uh, you usually have the ability in the center to put them back in line, uh, but it gets confusing for the student when you throw them back in line uh, and they have to connect with a different tutor. Um, sometimes in that process it gets confusing. So that's why this is uh, something that you have as an option, but um, I don't know if you'll use it. But basically you would go in and on the uh, the center level, you'd want to make sure that that was enabled for that center. So we go down to remote sign-in links and you can see I've been allowed my tutors to, uh, you, you know, create the links and uh, administrators for the center. OK, once I have those set up, that's uh, a good start. So um, we go back to this real quick, but we're going to go ahead and then you're going to want to either add the links to each tutor uh, that they're going to be connecting with or have the tutors add them themselves. Um, and then there is another option that we'll see in, in this third step where you can actually add kind of like a generic link um, for all the students to connect into and it will act as like a general lobby and you can break, you know, take them in breakout sessions from that. Um, so that is an option, um, but you know, if you wanted uh, each tutor to use their link that they're used to connecting to, um, you know, that's why we kind of mentioned that that, you know, you'd want to have that set up uh, here, but we're going to go into step three and this is basically, um, you know, where you 
would set up that uh, the virtual sign in links. And I'm going to go ahead and touch on step two here again, just to, to show you where that's at. So if I go to administration user accounts. And I look at my tutors only. Um, I can click on any one of them. And they're going to have this connect link field here, so you would put in whatever platform they're using, whether that's teams or zoom or whatever and um, make sure that link is up to date. Now on them, they're going to click on their name and go to account. And they're going to have a, a similar link that they can update. So like, for instance, I don't have mine in here, so I would definitely want to just copy that from my meeting platform. And this would just be a regular link that I, I would be connecting through uh, for sessions uh, that doesn't uh, change with every session. So. And then, um, all right, so then to create the, the drop in links is under center attendance. It's going to be virtual sign in and manage links. So this is a really great uh, new feature. If, if you've been using this before, we never really had a place that listed all the links that were uh, created. It does show only the last seven days. So if you know that you you know, created those back in 2020 or something like that. You could actually just extend the dates here. Um, uh, all the way out to, you know, the current month and it'll show you. Uh, well, it's not coming up, but it'll usually show you all the links that you've created in the past um, and you can change and filter out like for different centers. Maybe you created a link specifically for a service or a course so you can actually filter out and get um, exactly what you uh, we're looking for and all those links are valid until you um, either delete them or uh, they expire and we'll see how that works here in the next step but if I don't have one I'm going to click this plus uh, new virtual link here okay and if you have a single center you might not see all these but basically it's going to want me to start by picking the center um, these links just like a sign-in station uh, that's a physical one in your uh, center do uh, have to be specific to a center. So you're going to go ahead and select the, the one you're uh, using this for. And to start off, you're going to maybe give the students like uh, a little bit of instructions when uh, first signing in. So there's this is what they'll see um, uh, when they click and log in uh, and get to the uh, sign in uh, station page. And once they uh, see that and click sign in, um, now they're going to be presented with whatever options that you would normally set up for your walk-in process. Um, at this point in this step two, you could actually fix it though to specific things. So if I knew, let's say I offered workshops, um, I could actually fix it to the workshop and even maybe fix it to a specific workshop. So let's say I knew, um, I was doing a workshop on time management. So, you know, I could go ahead and pre select those options and then that way they wouldn't be asked anything when they when they come in. It's just going to be those options that that were selected. Um, you know, I can set basically anything if I knew it was going to be this tutor um, and basically have everything pre selected there. Uh, the last step, the third uh, step before you actually name it is really just giving instructions for them to join the session. So if you have any kind of uh, special information that you want to let them know, um, for instance, if you're using more of like that lobby approach, you could say something like you'll join a general lobby and you know a tutor will then uh, meet up with you and and um, pull you for a breakout session or something like that. So if you had you know something like that going on, you would you would put that there. <clears throat> in here um, it's going to ask for that general kind of meeting link now um, you don't have to use that so if like your tutors actually have their own links uh, in, in in they're all updated on their accounts and you don't really want that kind of general uh, lobby that that students go into um, you could actually say uh, use the uh, tutors link by checking this box now um, <clears throat> If you have both filled out, uh, if the tutor doesn't have uh, a link, it will use the general one up here. Um, but if they do, then it'll use their their link. So this is a, a, a smart design where it knows uh, whether or not the tutor has a link, and if not, connecting the general or or not. 
Um, if you're not using any general link, <clears throat> you really need to make sure that the tutors have their links put in there um, so that they'll be available for the students. And um, and you can actually uh, have them join early if you have a waiting line. Um, maybe you want them to join if it was like a general lobby. Um, <clears throat> so even before they're um, you know, admitted by like the, the tutors. Uh, it just depends on the way your, your setup is. So we have like some options for everyone here. And then finally we get to the expiration date. So you can have this expire, you know, like if I knew that I had an event that was seven days away <clears throat> and um, I'm never going to use this link again, I could go ahead and let it expire then. Um, if, uh, if I know that I don't want to have to come in here and, and reset this up um, and uh, for a good while, I could actually just say never in the uh, drop down and then it just doesn't expire until I uh, delete the link. So uh, however you want to do that, if you wanted to set it for a few months or uh, weeks or I don't know if we have years, days, hours, all those that we have in there, um, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, the final step is really just naming it for yourself and for anybody who's going to use this link. Um, you know, I just try to be as descriptive as possible. So I could say, um, you know, workshop link for uh, skills and tutoring center. You know, pretty much things that are pre-selected uh, that, that I have control over. <laughs> um is a good way to name it um and then a description is just you know anybody that's not you going back and wanting to know what this link was created for you know you could describe it out like you know created this to use for our workshops uh we have on saturday you know whatever it is uh i can't type of course <laughs> All right, so let's create the session link. So now at this point, um, really I just have to copy this and there's a little copy button right there. And I can actually share this on uh, our school's website or um, you know, you can embed it into like a button if you have uh, some experience with HTML so you can hide that behind like a button. Um, uh, I've even seen people put it out on their uh, homepage and um, like, let's see. Yeah, so right here uh, for that center, I think I have a link where this is just a general one where they would just pick all the options. Um, so if I click that and I'm a student, um, it would actually go ahead and let me um, uh, sign into that center. If you try to click these links and you're currently logged in as like, let's say an admin or a tutor, um, you might get that center close warning um, because Basically, it's just uh, it doesn't work unless you're a student, so you'd have to try it out even in like a like a different browser. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to do the let's see. Uh, I'm going to log in using a student account that I have. And I just pasted that link in the address bar up here. Oh, says I have the wrong password. OK, so here I have a student and you can see that first welcome message that I have and now it's going to take me to sign in. And because everything was selected that uh, in, in the beginning, uh, it actually just went right in. So nor normally that was the one for the workshop though. Um, so when I click launch session as a student, um, I'm gonna just go straight in um, and it, they must not have had a waiting line. Uh, so it just jumped right through. Um, after the session, the student would go here to sign out. Um, so that way you collect that full login time um, or the tutor if they're working with them can actually um, sign them out from like the session log or manage center screen. So however that's going to happen. But yeah, if I were to click this, it should go over to the Zoom. Because that's what I happen to have in there. I'm just going to close that so it doesn't load. <laughs> but uh, and then we'll sign out. 
So they just click it one more time. Uh, the red button actually here would sign them out. And we actually created this page in case, let's say their computer shut down or they had a problem with the internet. Um, it would take them to the screen so they could either relaunch the session uh, or uh, sign out. So um, there we go, and they're signed out. So it's pretty much like a sign-in station within their, their login here. Now, some, some of the new features, and I think this was in the PowerPoint, is we can actually add uh, whoop, schedule here. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so we have drop-in times and exceptions. So this is pretty similar to um, like our off times in the system uh, when you're setting like when the center is available. Um, but we're basically doing this only for the virtual. So we're going to go virtual drop in times. <clears throat> and you can see here I have from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Monday through Saturday. If I don't have it listed, then I don't have times for that. Now, if I didn't have any of these in here, I could actually go ahead and hit the plus new time. And you can do multiple days at once. And, um, you know, let's say I did uh, start to open it up for Sunday, um, but maybe it's limited hours. I could go ahead and put it Sunday, make sure I pick the right center, and uh, when we're available. So let's say on Sunday it's just noon to uh, maybe 5 p.m. So once I've got that set, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now I've got every day of the week. Uh, with some limited hours on um, uh, Sunday there. Now, um, if I have like a schedule that's not as uh, re reoccurring like that, I guess you could say, um, I can go ahead and create uh, drop-in exceptions um, where either we're just doing a special session uh, for one day um, or like a uh, time that we're actually closed. Maybe we have a like a day off. Uh, um, but basically, whenever these are not available, um, we, you know, the student's going to get center is closed, uh, kind of like how an admin does. Um, now, right now, if I if I don't have it in here, I can go ahead and hit the new exception. Make sure to always pick the center, um, and then just say uh, this one. You're going to pick the date range. So let's say uh, just a good example. Uh, coming up here in November the 24th and let's say 25th. So I'm going to apply 24th to the November 25th. OK, and we're going to just make it as closed, but I could also say is open um, if it was like maybe a special day, like we're doing like a Saturday event or something like that that we don't normally do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just save that and then it's going to make sure that we're closed on those dates and nobody can sign in during that time. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. The The last step uh, in that PowerPoint was really to advertise it and I think I showed a, f a few different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, I think I took up all my time. So I'm going to open it up for questions. OK, thanks, Nick. Yeah, I don't see any questions coming in yet about this topic, but um, again, if you do have any questions, you can feel free to put that in the chat. We'll give it a minute to see if any questions come in for that, and then we will open it up to uh, we will open it up to general Q&A. And I know we already have at least one question for that so far, um, but if you do have a question about this, uh, you can put it in the chat. You can also unmute yourself at this time. OK, Jennifer has a question. She says, if there are no tutors available to take the drop in, what message does does the student get, if any? Um, so this this um, is a good question. I'm going to go ahead and just show it in the system rather than uh, kind of just try to explain it. But um, basically they're going to get a message to that effect. Um, and, and this isn't something new. Um, in fact, like if you go into your uh, control panel, and um, walk in settings for uh, whichever center here. Um, when you look at the tutors, we actually give you um, something called availability. So when you're setting up like how they're going to be um, signing in and, and what options they're going to be picking. So if the tutor availability, uh, you can show, you know, based on their schedule, based on the assignments, 
or show everyone. Now this only works if you're a single center, the show everyone, because it's going to be every tutor from every center. Otherwise, if you have multiple centers, that doesn't really work. Um, but most people generally use one of the top two. So it's either use their tutor assignment info, um, which is like the courses that they can help with, or using the schedule actually takes into consideration um, every hour of the day, as well as uh, like the services and courses that they're available for. So uh, this is the most uh, stringent, I guess you could say, um, but it it will let them know that there's no t tutor available for that um, that service. And then um, if you have the waiting line enabled uh, under the general section of the control panel uh, for your center, there is also uh, another tutor availability, but this is um, <clears throat> you know, only for the waiting line. Uh, we call it the intake system is another name uh, where you have similar settings. So you can say use schedule information, show only those that signed in or show everyone. And again, that last one really doesn't work outside of a single center. Um, but these other two uh, kind of give you some other options. Um, and and the one in the, the walk-in settings is if you're actually having them select a tutor, uh, which I guess this is this is too. But this is if it's uh, the intake systems enabled. And and the difference between this one versus using schedule information, you can actually tell it to only show who's signed in. So if you wanted um, to have to have your tutors. Uh, that are going to be available actually sign in. It's not just based on like whether they were scheduled uh, to be in like they actually have to, you know, sign in for the day. Uh, normally up here. Um, if you enabled that uh, where they could sign in from anywhere, uh, let's say they're working remotely, uh, they can click their name and click sign into a location as well. And that way they'll be signed in and it'll be available for this uh, option here. So there's basically those are two different ways. There's from the waiting line in general or or through the walk ins. Let's go ahead and open it to general Q&A. If any questions do come up about this topic, you can of course ask them uh, when they come up. But um, Amber asks, um, is there a way to make subject areas not active via an import uh, or a method in which to mass deactivate subject areas? Um, so the idea with subject areas is that they're usually reusable uh, over the semesters. Like, you know, you could have uh, maybe a course that, uh, you know, let's say college algebra that is reused over and over. Um, so, I mean, there's there's actually no harm really with like it being still active uh, in there, um, especially if no one's going to be registered to them. Um, so we don't really have like an option to deactivate uh, subject areas. Now classes are breakdowns of our, our courses or subject areas. So uh, to give you an example, I'm going to jump into the software again. So if we go under administration, I've renamed my um, subject areas courses because it made more sense for me. Uh, so you might see subject areas here uh, under administration. Uh, but when you get into these uh, subject areas or courses, and let's say I, I just click on something uh, like accounting here. Um, if I go to the scheduled classes tab, uh, I have a semester. Uh, and in the drop down, I can go ahead and pick uh, from different semesters and see uh, when the last time we had that class was. And uh, apparently, oh, there we go, spring of 2019. So. You know, maybe it's not something that's always offered, um, but uh, using things that kind of hide these as well uh, is a good thing. So let's say I don't want, uh, you know, all the courses to show up in our course catalog. Um, when I'm going through the control panel and I'm setting up like the walk in settings, for instance, um, I'll pick a center just as an example, the one I use the most here. Um, and, and I go to the subject area or course selection. Um, what I can do is there's a thing that says use student enrollment. And what that's do, doing is it's going to limit what they're shown to only the courses they're enrolled in. Um, 
and and therefore they're not going to see any of those other courses that might still be uh, active or subject areas that still still might be active. Um, and uh, one of the other aspects, if we go back to the courses now, is when I look at one of these, um, you can have uh, like a course that's available to all students. So maybe I just created my own um, courses. In fact, I think I, I did some of those. Uh, uh, for instance, we talk to students, you know, let's say about, you know, time management or, um, you know, different skills that they might have, but it's not necessarily a course. So I could actually go in there and create kind of just with a title, uh, a course, and I could say it's available to all students. So there's ways to kind of like have things either made available. Um, and then if something really is, uh, I guess, bothering bothering you as far as being active, there is a, a checkbox here uh, that you can use. Um, and, and also there's an import for that. So you can actually, um, on, on the import, you could have a column that says whether these things are active or not, um, but it doesn't do it automatically. Like it doesn't inactivate these because, um, you know, technically the, at the course level that they're able to be reused uh, later, maybe in another semester or so. Yeah, so I can see like going back, uh, you know, this is the last time spring 2020 is when they had uh, this class. So it, it may not be used all the time, but it, it could basically be reused, so. Okay, any other questions? Thank you, Nick. Welcome. Hi, I have a quick question about the homepage with the new update of academia. So under center news, I noticed you had it too. You're we looking at it and we saw it in our center. Under center news, it has like that skills and tutoring center off to the right, like in the little text towards the bottom right of the box. Is it, okay. Yeah, is there any yeah. way to get rid of that? We can't seem to find where it's coming from. Uh, this is probably just to label uh, which center it belongs to. If you're looking at, let's say, like all centers, um, you know, this this is going to go ahead and let you know, like, oh, okay, that's the announcement for advising. Because in case they didn't put any kind of identifying markings, like like I have, uh, you you would kind of know, oh, okay. And when you're looking at at the college level, like that's helpful. Um, I don't know if you're looking at it filtered by your center, then it doesn't make as much sense because you know which center it is up here. Um, mm -hmm. But I know that I know that wasn't like that um, originally, so I don't know if there was something they did to improve it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if it's configurable though either. So if you go to the control panel, appearance and theme, I think this is, oh no, it's um, announcement, sorry. So yeah, even though I have this announcement, there's no option that I can see that says to. Uh... Okay. You know what? What the name of the center? Um... Okay, thanks, Nick. It looks like we might have one more question coming in. So I'll give that a couple seconds. Okay, Amber asks uh, if a center was temporarily closed, not taking appointments, or temporary, temporarily closed or not taking appointments, can you hide that center from the drop down menu? Yeah, the only way you can hide them. Uh, yeah, so th it is actually possible. Let me let me show you that actually. What I was actually looking at, I don't know if you guys see this on the screen. I went back to the academia version history um, and the way I access that is kind of neat. So if you go up to your help menu and about academia, it loads a page that looks similar to this. You might have different numbers in here, uh, but if you do uh, view change log, 
that opens a tab with like all the changes. So I was just trying to see if they um, had noted that they um, uh, put which center that was being um, displayed out there, but. Um, oh, OK, and then to get to the question, sorry, administration control panel. So we find ourselves back in the control panel here um, and for uh, that center that is having you know no appointments for a while uh, what you can do is go ahead and go to the appointment section and you know find the center let's say um, maybe they're doing some uh, construction work in the nursing lab so i'm going to go ahead and view those uh, settings for them so i'm going to disable appointment scheduling for the time being so uh, we're going to go ahead and just check this first box and this is the only way is to check the very first box at the top uh, for that that menu item to like go away uh, completely for that center. Now you do want to give it like five ish minutes or so because that's a major change. It's, it's like affecting a menu item. So when I when I do this, if I were to go like directly in here, uh, I might still see the nursing lab. Uh, here, let me try a student here. OK, continue. And actually they're they're gone from the list, but it can sometimes take a little while because that's kind of like a major change to the system. Um, and just the same is true when you re enable it. So, um, you know, sometimes the changes aren't like instantly gone from the menu. Um, sometimes you may even log out and log back in and see if it uh, is no longer there. But yeah, you can see that nursing isn't even um, on the menu any longer. So. And uh, to reverse that, it's just unchecking it, so.